So the first keynote speaker that I'm going to introduce is Christine Bull Anderson, and she is chairman, or I should actually say chairwoman, of the New Carlsberg Foundation. And the New Carlsberg Foundation has uh, made great art available to a wide range of audiences since about 1902, when it was created by Carl Jakobsen, who was the heir and founder of the Carlsberg Global Brewery that most of you would probably be familiar with. So Christina, it is my great pleasure to hand over to you. Thank you so much. Um, and as the, the chair of the board of the New Carlsberg Foundation in Denmark, I'm really happy to participate in today's event. I would like to thank you and Lena and the other organizers for this invitation and say that I'm really impressed with the efforts you made to realize this important conference under such unusual circumstances that in my opinion actually makes it even more relevant uh, to talk about Bildung. Um, and during my short eight minutes, I would like firstly to say a little bit about the foundation and its historical mission and purpose of providing the Danish people with cultural, aesthetic and artistic Bildung and then uh, secondly, I would like to talk a little bit about how we in the foundation believe that art, not least in, in situations of crisis, like the one we are experiencing right now, provides us with a critically important space for reflection and sharing of emotions and visions for the future in order for us uh, as citizens and human beings to navigate democratically and existentially um, during such a difficult time. Uh, as mentioned, the new Carlsberg Foundation was founded by the brewer Kai Jakobsen in 1902. Uh, it was born with his vision of sharing art and culture that he himself so passionately loved and collected. He was also the founder of the Glyptothek, the museum in Copenhagen, with the great collections of ancient art, but also French uh, masterpieces of the 19th century. He wanted actually to share the value of art with the broader population of Denmark um, and the foundation was given this responsibility to promote, enhance and develop art, the appreciation of art and the desire for art, which is something about, yeah, really wanting it. You can say that this obligation much later became part of a social democratic welfare state in a way. Uh, but, but Karl Jakobsen actually had these ideas more than 50 years earlier about sharing the access to, uh, to great art. And so today, our basic activities include collecting art, supporting Danish art institutions and Danish artists in Denmark and abroad, commissioning public artworks and supporting uh, scientific research within the vis field of visual art. And so, of course, Karl Jakobsen could not have predicted a situation like the one Denmark and the rest of the world is going through right now with the lockdown of the whole society, including the cultural institutions and the art world. Um, however, at the foundation, based on his vision, we feel more obliged than ever to support the art world in this situation because it seems that exactly these uh, situations are like a, a test of, of um, democracies and also Bildung, how Bildung uh, should step in and uh, make every citizen reflect and think about what would be the right thing to do. And uh, so I think that Lena's initial um, talk about uh, how politicians can rule citizens and appeal to their moral or fe feelings uh, is exactly what uh, our uh, task is about right now. Uh, you can say that so far in Denmark, at least during the corona crisis, um, anxiety and fear of corona and chaos, emotions and negative emotions have been used strategically by the government to, as tools to, to make uh, our disciplined society and of course for a reason. Um, as citizens in democratic societies, however, we are all going through extraordinary historical times, having to accept very tough disciplinary restrictions, losing our democratic rights, being isolated from each other, and being controlled by our state in ways that we had never believed would become reality in order to control this and avoid this uh, pandemic. Borders are closed, people don't meet, etc. And so we see the reasons for these changes based on fear of the consequences of Corona, but it leaves us behind with feelings like sorrow, loss, anxiety, and worries about the future that many experts actually call unhealthy. Um, and so 
we believe in the foundation that, of course, we should respect the steps of control and discipline that have been taken to stop the spread. But we also truly believe that the access that that, that this situation really shows how important the access to art is um, in this particular moment, but also um, at all times uh, in society to provide people with a space to reflect on what is happening, to comfort people, share experiences of, for instance, earlier uh, diseases, um, to create uh, new visions for the future and to reflect on how we can live together in new ways. And we can see that the artists are reacting, that they are, of course, struggling at the moment because of the lockdown, but also that you can turn to the artist uh, to, um, to, to experience new ways of asking questions, but also to find uh, answers together. So we believe that, uh, especially uh, now, you can see the need for artistic and aesthetic building uh, you know that that people should uh, have the the understanding of of uh, the languages of the aesthetics uh, which should be given to them during the educational time uh, in order for them to make use of art uh, but also um, for society to keep uh, art op the art world open uh, you can see in Germany now how museums are being opened in Denmark uh, they are not on the agenda yet. Uh, I don't know, that tells something about the differences, uh, about the idea, about the building idea in Germany and in Denmark, um, uh, I think. And also, um, we feel that uh, we should support uh, the artists and the art institutions in this situation um, in order to create the possibility, the structural possibility for, for, for the people of Denmark to experience art also during this difficult time. Um, you can say that at the same time as we see how important art is, art is also going through a crisis due to practical reasons. Uh, the sharing of art is at least temporarily very limited since as mentioned, the museums and the galleries are locked down. Um, they are not given much political priority. Um, and with the borders closed, um, I think there's another dilemma or difficult uh, crisis uh, for, for art uh, uh, that we should think about, and that is how we can keep on sharing uh, and exchanging art, not only digitally, but also uh, physically, because a lot of the aesthetic uh, experience um, comes from physical meetings between artworks and people. If you think about paintings and sculptures, um, how can we keep on sharing and exchanging the experience of art across borders? Uh, we see biennials, art fairs, international exhibitions being closed, impossible to realize at the moment. And even though it should be possible for us to travel again, um, this is also th something we should think about in a more long-term uh, perspective because of the climate crisis we are facing. So how much more can we keep on uh, traveling and transporting artworks around the world? Um, we could stay behind our national borders with each our little national uh, art scene, but it would be very unhealthy, I feel, and it would also be something uh, that would go against uh, the nature of art and artists that feel like exchanging and communicating. Um, so I think a lot of uh, important questions are raised, raised about the importance of art, but also with um, a need for us to think about how we can keep on sharing the experience of art as a very important uh, uh, part of the building that any society should have and offer to its uh, citizens. And I think that what is what we will be focusing on a lot in the strategies of the, of the foundation uh, in the short term to save and keep healthy the, the art world of Denmark, but in the long term also for how we should act uh, in Denmark and internationally. Mm -hmm. Christine, thank you so much for, for that perspective. And as I was listening to you, I was wondering, is there anything in terms of specific projects that the foundation is planning at the moment that yeah. is a response to, to the situation? Yeah, we have uh, immediately reacted by creating uh, a possibility for art museums to uh, apply for help 
for their reopening situation because they are losing so much uh, money from the lockdown, no tourists, no visitors, and in order for them to have uh, enough money to reopen, we have uh, made a special uh, pool for that for them to uh, apply to. But then we have also made actually, uh, we are having a performance festival, which sounds really weird, but it will be uh, in order to also underline the importance of physical uh, interaction in, in within the restrictions so that we will have very small audiences going through uh, perhaps four or five days in Copenhagen with distance etc but in order to you know go against the the digital sort of tendency and also to uh, have the art world come together uh, and I think that uh, Perhaps like the Dogma films of Lars von Trier and so on, this situation can create new ways of um, experiencing art and appreciating art that uh, we hadn't thought of before. So we are trying to make the best of it and to, to save institutions from uh, yeah, actually close, closing for, for permanent, um, yeah. Yeah, for lack of uh, financial funds. And exactly. Resources. Yeah. Um, actually, I would love to hand over to Esli and see what are you picking up from the chat that might be interesting for Christine to answer or to be read out. Yeah, yeah I see two questions here that, that I think are, are quite similar from uh, Swan Barrett and Gerard Pizowski. Uh, Swan is asking, could you say something about how you feel art and aesthetics can specifically help in building in the current circumstances? Yeah, I think that uh, there's a lot of rational rhetorics going on from the politicians that you should do like this and you should understand that and you should, you know, discipline yourself. And, and of course you do it because you don't want horrible situations uh, like the ones we see in Italy or are you, you have all the rational arguments, but at the same time, Rhetorics are also based on, on fear, at least in Denmark, there was a lack of a document that was, uh, you know, having the prime minister understand that it would be important for her to, to increase fear within the, the, every citizen, which is not uh, healthy, I think, and which also goes against the Bildung uh, sort of uh, idea. And instead, uh, I think that it would be really good for people if they could uh, turn to art and aesthetics and have this small sort of open critical um, reflection uh, with the artists who are able to, you know, um, not only follow the rational sort of way of thinking, but always open to different sort of perhaps uh, not rational ways of, of thinking about what is going on. Um, and in that way, turn the situation into something more positive, perhaps something that we can learn from, something that can give us new ideas or help us come over it, not like therapy, but a bit like a place to turn to, to reflect and to um, allow more critical thinking. Um, whereas, you know, the political rhetorics are very sort of strategic and very rational. And, so, and, and I think there's a need for that. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Esli, anything else that is worth highlighting from the chat? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it follows up quite nicely. Um, Dan van Riet is asking how, if, if you're wanting to have this critical approach, how do you ensure that it's not forced upon people, but that it's a healthy aversion among, for example, students? Uh, you mean that you don't force people to uh, experience art or...? Exactly. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> that's always a problem. I think, um, well, um, well, that's that's what the whole sort of educational system is about, isn't it? That we should think about what what future generations would need, and then we should make it fun and relevant for students to to participate as good. And that's what museums. Uh, do professionally, for instance, they have uh, developed uh, methods over many years in order to engage young people and children in the experience of art. Of course, as we know from Howard Gardner, uh, children have different uh, talents and skills and intelligences and we are, we are different, but I think that at least every child should be allowed to be exposed uh, to art and to have uh, the basic skills in understanding the languages of art and that's the uh, responsibility of the welfare state of the educational system so i have no doubt so that is 
only good for people and then later they can think for themselves whether they like this kind of art or that uh, and museums uh, could be a, a very important institution to turn to um, as a critical and open and reflective space for, for people through whole life uh, to, to meet art and think about it um, together and, and alone. So Isli, I think we maybe have time for a couple more and I see there are two more here, so that's perfect. So let's get to those as well. Okay. Um, yeah, the next up is Lene. Um, Lene is asking, have any artists helped us understand the science around the virus, the coronavirus? If the artists, sorry, have... Have they helped us to under, better understand the, the virus we are facing at the moment? Yeah, I think it's interesting to look at, for instance, a Danish artist like Christine Röpstorff, who was actually the Danish participant in the Venice Biennale last time, and she had her whole uh, uh, pavilion called Influenza, and it was about how um, darkness and um, disease can be um, actually something relevant uh, instead of always thinking about uh, developing new ideas or making money or being rational that you can uh, that that or you could look at Superflex another Danish uh, artist group that have developed architecture for fish because they say this is not the end of the world that was mentioned you know that was thought about in connection with the climate crisis but you have a lot of different Danish artists who by themselves come up with, you know, provocative, but also, um, yeah, realistic, uh, in a way, um, suggestions for how we can think about uh, the world in the future, um, you know, based on the, 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 the brutal facts of climate change, um, pandemics, whatever, instead of always trying to control everything and wanting the world to stay as it has been um, or as it was. And I think, um, yeah, that, that's very enriching and, and very interesting to look at. Hesley, you want to go one more? Sure. Um, one more. Marta Yen Bekovi is expressing a worry that, that the current digitalization of art is having some effects on the way that we are experiencing art um, mm. and she's asking will galleries need to offer something new and attractive than what they did before the corona crisis and i guess yeah. also what would that be i agree i think the digital revolution has positive sides and will be sort of uh, accelerated now for instance we've seen a festival of documentaries copenhagen ducks having great success also in the direct uh, connection connecting with the with the viewers uh, even though it was not physical, but I also believe that the the, the physical relationship between you know uh, the the artwork, uh, the aesthetic artwork, like a painting, and the viewer cannot be um, replaced by digital experiences. But perhaps we should accept that then mass tourism in big museums and huge blockbusters uh, cannot uh, be the way we experience art in the future that we should uh, perhaps benefit from 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 less people in the in the galleries uh, in in the sense that we will have more sort of um, aesthetic and and beautiful experiences and not so many other you know people around us uh, smelling and sweating um, so that mass tourism and that blockbuster uh, thinking in museums will be uh, replaced by by um, by appreciating uh, less people um, together um, when when experiencing the artworks, and so. Um, but I think that galleries and museums and art fairs and biennials should rethink um, their role. Uh, but I also think that we cannot do without them. We should meet, and also the social society of art is art world is very important. People meet and talk and discuss. And I think that's a uh, crucial part of, of sharing art. Um, so we'll, we, we can do that in the future, but, but maybe it will take a while before we get back to what we used to do. I'm sure it will. Hmm. 
Christine, thank you so much for joining us uh, for this interesting uh, view through the lens of somebody who's running such an important institution and sort of also experiencing the limitations in this current space and, and mm. noticing quite clearly, uh, actually to link that to a comment that Dan van Briet um, posted in the chat as well, sort of the question again, uh, who, who is determining what is art worth, worth teaching other people, right? And, and if we teach young people today what we think art is, then is that not the same as what we heard from uh, Eric von Weizsäcker before in terms of, uh, you know, a, a society focusing so much on economics because it's a certain lens that we're imposing. Mm. People. And I think the, the awareness of just always those multiple, multiple perspectives is, is one that we need to also see as one big part of building, right? Yeah, I agree. But also, I just ha ha want to say one thing, and that is that the commercial art world is not uh, unimportant when it comes to, to the artists, because that's how they make their living. Selling artworks is their way of making their living. Uh, so it's more about institutions and their economy, perhaps. Uh, I, I don't believe that, that non-commercial uh, is the only sort of solution to um, to the art world. It's a big business in Denmark. Uh, it's a huge business actually that has to do with tourism, uh, the value chain of hotels and, and so on and so forth. So I think uh, we should not be naive. Uh, and it's also a lot of workplaces. Many people are, are occupied with working in the, in the art world, in the, in the museums. So I think it's a, something that you have to think about in a very balanced way and not be naive about it. But, but uh, of course, um, there are many good things about thinking less about uh, economy and more about content and, and building. Yeah, I agree. Great. Christine, thank you so much. And I think actually that was a perfect yeah. segue to our next keynote speaker. So thank you for being here. We know you have to run. So um, safe uh, travels wherever you go now. Thank you. Day. Goodbye and have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining. Thank you.